It's time for a mid-2022 full home theater tour. Let's take a look. So my channel is all about home theater, hi-fi, audio video, and other assorted types of technologies. And it's really been about the journey of my home theater space. And I've done quite a lot in this space since I started the channel about a year ago. Um, in the last, in the beginning of 2022 and through the first part of this year, I overhauled quite a bit. And so the original kind of overview tour video is pretty significantly out of date. Figured I'd make a new one and go over kind of holistically all the different elements of my space, what's in here, how it works, and all of that. If you really want individually detailed conversations and videos, look at the home theater playlist where I've gone into all kinds of detail about the thought process and the methodology, design considerations, and, and all the install installation vlogs uh, for setting up the space in its current incarnation. Many, many videos, it's all there, check it out. But here we're gonna do a, a holistic tour of the space as it is right now. So. Right off the bat, I'll, I'll comment that my room here is in the basement. It's roughly 18 by 17 with an 11 foot ceiling. If you do the math, a little bit over 3000 cubic feet. This room was not designed to be a home theater from the very beginning. We did custom architecture and build the home. And this room was a gym. We had mirrors on the walls, hardwood floor. We never actually outfitted it for workout with equipment. It sat empty for a few years. Finally got the go ahead from my wife, awesome to convert it to the theater space that I've always wanted. After tinkering around in the living room and not finding it to be fully to my satisfaction. And, and so here we are today. All right, so as we come in here, a couple things to point out. These are solid, solid wood, solid core doors. We did originally buy them with glass panels. These are clear glass panels that I covered up on the back with some kind of static cling vinyl to, to black them out. Someday I'd like to buy brand new doors with real full on wood panels, but that hasn't been in the cards. This works for right now. There's nothing else like acoustically specific about these doors. It's just a regular door jam and, and regular door mounting. I did put some stripping in here though to help kind of add a little soft touch between the door and the door jam. It doesn't go all the way around, but it does enough to help kind of lock these down a little bit here as well for when the double doors come together. It, it takes care of the rumbling. I don't hear the doors shaking. I don't hear the doors rumbling. Now there is a solid cut hardwood floor hickory under the rug here. We did do kind of the light gray carpet um, in the space, had that installed when we were converting it to the home theater. One of the recent additions has been this rug. I just, this is a high pile, just regular polyester rug off of rugs.com. Something on the order of like 10 by eight feet to black out this upper front floor space and cut down on like the light reflections that would come off the screen and getting to the couch, which is our current seating. I really, really look forward to having theater chairs in this space someday but this is what we have right now. This is an Ikea Kivik sectional. There's four pieces to it here, uh, two chases on the end, and then, or actually three pieces, sorry. The two chases on the end, and then a love seat section in the middle. Plenty of room for our family of four. Most of the family likes to lounge on the chases on the wings. I tend to sit towards the middle. Of course, sweet spot for the home theater. Uh, performance and all of that. We have a couple of these thick pillows. My son actually picked those out, four of them, one for each of us to kind of lay on and, and, and support uh, as we're sitting on the couch. Those just came from Target. I want to say they're about two by two foot, pretty thick, pretty thick and comfortable. I personally like the purple ones. The, the other uh, brownish gray ones are a little more, a little more shag and they get a little hotter as, as you sit on them. Um, we do keep the room or the couch uh, dedicated with these blankets. These are hand crocheted or handmade uh, by my aunt. A couple of dark purple wine colored ones and a couple of black ones. The basement's in the theater. It's chilly in here. Even in the summertime, particularly if we have the AC on, coming down here to watch a movie, it, it's cold enough to, to maybe cover up your legs and, and use a blanket. So we had four of them made. Again, kind of one for each of us, although they are big enough that a couple of folks can can snuggle under one just fine. Um, and then the bean bags down here serve both as kind of a footrest if you're sitting on the sofa pieces, a place to at least put your feet up a little bit, or a lot of times if 
the kids are down here with some friends or we have another family and the kids sit on the floor it's a little bit of a, a something to lay on something to lean on you know while they're while they're down there there is a couch table back here so it's a place to you know set the remotes set down a drink or a bowl of popcorn i believe this was a gift actually from my family holiday after i finished the room originally i think it came from ikea and there's a, a variety of some storage cubbies and that back there i don't tend to do too much uh, keep too much back there and also worth pointing out is this guy here this is a honeywell air purifier 100 bucks 200 bucks from best buy i do run that most of the time uh, when we're done with the room i don't run it of course while we're watching movies because it has its own noise and its own fan however it helps kind of clean the air in a room that otherwise stays completely shut door shut we don't want our cats and pets and whatnot getting in here so air blows in but air doesn't really exhaust from this room too well and so running the purifier while we're not in here just keeps all of the particulates and, and cuts down on the dust accumulating on the couch and the table and other places um, the room is entirely black aside from the trim uh, the trim matches the, the original paint color that we used on the trim throughout the house when I redid the room I didn't feel like painting that trim and I do like a little bit of the contrast I like the way the trim looks in the white the walls though and the ceiling are all Sherwin Williams tricorn flat black I had carte blanche to to darken this room out blacken it out um, so walls and ceiling as you can see are all that same paint color now this is a pretty light controlled room but behind those curtains up there is a glass block window that goes out to our backyard I have tried a few things over the years to black that window out and I have not been successful I tried to cover it up and that actually brought in some trouble because of condensation that formed between the window and what I was using to cover it so I took that out as soon as I saw that moisture accumulating up there and aside from the curtain I just leave it now it is actually light outside right now so you can see actually there's not really a whole lot of light that comes through that's because on the other side of the window outside it's it's all landscaping and there's some really big thick plants that actually obscure a lot of the light coming down so there's only a couple times of the year when those plants are kind of cut back and dead where more light gets in but we tend to only really use the room um, at night or in the evening anyway and so it hasn't been that big of a bother to me um, I think maybe the next time the plants die in their cycle I might go out there and use some of that same uh, static cling vinyl that I used on the, the window panes um, outside there the room is now fully treated all with panels uh, from GIK I used a couple of their home theater packages and then a few extra purchases on top of those so on each sidewall we've got a trio of the 242 panels uh, three there of course and three there kind of symmetrically set up I do have staked uh, uh, stacked tri traps in all of the corners uh, the ones up front have a little bit of, of range limiting uh, and uh, additional composition to them that GIK recommended and then we have two monster base traps on stands in the back there and those actually do have scatter plates so there is some diffusion within the panels uh, hidden under the black fabric I also added a couple of their two-way two-dimensional diffuser uh, foam panels two inch thick up there on either side of the projector that was really less about acoustics and more well I guess more about adding a little bit of extra diffusion to the back wall but when I did my rebuild my more recent rebuild I was covering up blemishes and that was one of the easiest ways to do it the latest addition of course if you've been watching the channel is the ceiling panels that is eight uh, two by two of the three-dimensional two-way diffusion absorption panels helping to take care of ceiling reflections if we look at some other infrastructure you can see the glow and lights there we have quite a few actually nine recessed lights uh, in the space here I only use four of them and I have the bulbs kind of unscrewed enough that they don't power on in those other locations I don't feel the need to have and I don't want light shining onto the screen up front if we are using the light so I have just the lights in the back and kind of over the couch uh, enabled um, I don't have the one directly above the projector uh, screwed in and the one directly over the middle seat of the couch either 
There's a couple of other remnants in here. Might be hard to see. There's a little bit of a cap between the ceiling panels there. There was a ceiling fan in here that I removed. And there's a couple of extra speakers up front. You can see the one black one there and the other one right there. That's part of our Control 4 distributed audio system, one of our eight zones throughout the house. So that's kind of a separate audio uh, source zone besides the 7.2.4 audio that's in the, in the theater directly here itself. That is a JVC NX7 projector, still on my first bulb. I got about a thousand hours on it. Amazing, amazing projector. I've been very, very happy with it. Sharpness, quality, image quality, black levels, all of that frame adaptive HDR processing added to that after the fact, mounted on a Chief RPA uh, ceiling mount, you know, hanging down just a little bit there, kind of from that soffited area. All right, looking at speakers, we count on our surrounds, as I mentioned, 7.2.4. There's one, two, three, four surrounds. Those are Focal 1000 series in-wall IW6. I haven't painted the grills yet, still sitting there white, but you can see the Focal, I think the Focal logo in silver down on the bottom. Love these speakers, I'm very happy with them in here. If you watch some of the other videos, folks might, folks might point out how those speakers, they look mounted a little bit high. Not really, we're within the Dolby Atmos specification and I did wanna, they, they look a little artificially higher than they are because the couch is kind of low, lower profile seating. And if we do end up with theater chairs in here, it's gonna bring the height, the, the height of the seat backs up quite a bit. And I wanted those sides and I wanted those rear surrounds to be able to make sure to project over that. So I chose the heights that I did all within Dolby spec. Up on the ceiling there, we have our four Focal ICW6 round speakers. They're all just firing straight down four to five feet apart between the speakers uh, side to side and front to back. This is what I was able to accomplish. I might have liked to have put the two rear Atmos speakers a little further back, but as you can see, they're pretty close to the trim as it is, and I didn't want them all the way back uh, into that soffit. Every room has some constraints, and that was one of mine. Up front here, we're looking at a scope screen. That's a Seymour AV, acoustically transparent, 163 inch, center stage XD material uh, screen. Love it, love having the scope screen. I do use the JVC zooming and installation modes to go from 16.9 to zooming up scope content. I don't have a lens and I don't have any type of scope uh, stretching processing in the room yet. We'll see at some point if I do that, but for now the the ability to stretch is working pretty good. Behind there is a variety of acoustical treatments along with three Focal 1000 IW LCR 6s, the bigger, bigger brothers of the speakers that I used for the side and rear surrounds. I'll show that in, I've, I've shown that in a separate picture. I don't have a good way to get behind the screen. It's easy enough to take down, but it's not on like gas shocks and I can't kind of pull it up and show behind it very easily. So I'll show that in a separate picture, but if I ever do have to take the screen down, it's mounted on some two by fours, kind of floating out from the wall a little bit on the same, uh, or on the slot hanging uh, structure that Seymour you know, has for their, their, reg their standard installation for these types of screens. Up front, we've got a pair of Arundel 1723 2S subwoofers. There's a dual 13.8 inch driver, one on each side. And again, we do have two of these. Right now, I've got them both at the front of the room and uh, probably be experimenting sometime, kind of putting one up front, one back. Although I think my longer term end game will be to get four subs in here, potentially with a couple of near fields behind the couch. So that's the room, calm, peaceful. I really love the integrated nature of having the speakers in the walls. Again, the scope screen, this JVC projector, the whole is definitely greater than the sum of its parts and it just performs wonderfully. Let's take a look at the rack. All right, so here's my AV rack. It is a strong style, strong brand rack. Quite a bit of equipment in here. Some of it serving more than the theater, some is serving the living room in other areas of the house. But if we kind of just go from the top to the bottom, we've got some gaming equipment up top there. That is a uh, RTX 3090 gaming PC, Intel NVIDIA gaming PC and a PlayStation 5 and an Xbox Series X. I've got a DS18 
1821 Synology NAS there. Currently three, only three drives populated. I actually use that for a lot of office, personal, uh, YouTube channel things, but I do store rips on it as well. It does serve some local, local, uh, locally accessible ripped physical media. I've got an Apple TV there, the latest 4K model. That's uh, the, the, the standard device that we use throughout our household. We are an Apple household uh, for you know streaming, YouTube TV, Apple Music, and all of that. Down below, we've got the Kaleidoscape. Very important, very key, I would say, feature of our home theater use here. That is a Strato C player uh, next to a compact Terra 12 terabyte. I've got far, far, far more movies in my Kaleidoscape library than I can hold in just 12 terabyte, but with a gigabit internet service, I can download a, a movie from the Kaleidoscape store in all of 10 minutes and have anything that I wanna, wanna watch readily accessible in very short order. I'm gonna skip a couple devices there because they don't serve the home theater, and we're gonna focus in on this boy, this gal, Anthem AVM70. Uh, picked that up some months ago. Really love this unit. Use Anthem Arc Genesis to calibrate the room. All the speakers and the subwoofers, just amazing, amazing sound. Great features, awesome updates. Very happy with Anthem equipment. And down below there, we have a stack of triple Parasound amplifiers, Halo amps. There's an A31 sitting above a pair of A52 Plus models. So the A31, the three channels of the A31 drives the Focal IW LCR6s. And then the two five channel amps, uh, one of them is driving all of the left channel speakers of the theater. So left surround, left rear surround, and the two left Atmos, and the other one is driving the right. Love having separates. This combination, Anthem, Parasound, Focal, is just absolutely aces. A couple other things of interest in the rack that do serve the home theater. Um, at the bottom left there is a Cyber Power uh, UPS. So everything in the rack, essentially, except for the Parasound amps, uh, is, is run off of that UPS for some protection and, and power outage protection and all of that. And from a control perspective, I'm using Control 4. The bottom two Control 4 devices are for whole house audio distribution. We're going to skip those for now and focus in on the EA5 controller. That's my current uh, single and whole house EA5 controller. That, of course, drives everything that goes on uh, in the theater space there. There's one Control 4 dimmable lighting zone in the theater. And uh, if you noticed as I was kind of walking around the room, I've got a Control 4 Neo remote that I drive the theater with, control the theater with, when I'm sitting in there using the room. All right, back in the room here, I did want to point out one other kind of major element of the space that I'm really quite proud of, actually, and that's the curtains. So you see a lot of black velvety curtains hanging in here. They're on the back wall, kind of covering up a closet door. There's these skirts kind of all along the side walls, around that, that side wall section back there, and all the way around to the left to the front of the room. Probably be hard to tell with the lighting, but the entirety of the front wall, essentially around the screen, from the trim uh, all the way down to the floor, is curtained. And then about the first, um, first few feet of each side wall as well, on both the left and the right walls. So I had a local seamstress make these curtains, and uh, both for the perspective of making the theater feel like a theater, uh, to be able to float the screen out ahead of the curtains and give that front wall and the screen kind of that 3D effect. And they also serve a cable hiding purpose. So all of my cables, my speaker wire, Ethernet, HDMI to the projector, it's all behind these curtains. Surface mounted with some like plastic uh, stick-on channels. And so up, up to the projector, back down again, over to the speakers over there. I did it all in room. Again, I kind of retrofit this theater and I didn't tear the drywall down. I didn't pre-wire it for this application. And so doing the curtains and doing that surface mount really helped me get the room done in, in a really, I think, unique way. And it makes it incredibly easy to change stuff. If I want to change wires, pull different wires, whatever, I have access to everything. I can get to everything around the space without having to get, you know, get into the walls again. Lastly, I'll point out, um, just from a cabling perspective, there's a lot of Mogami cables 
world's best cables that I purchased from Amazon. That's pretty much what I use for all of the audio. There's a long RUI Pro fiber optic HDMI that goes from the rack up to the projector, already set for HDMI 2.1, takes care of that, and then just some other assorted monoprice ethernet and some specific length power cables. So that's my home theater space. And I'm always, I've already got ideas in mind for more stuff that I wanna do in here. Other upgrades that I wanna make, of course, in time, there's always gonna be new projectors, new audio equipment, and all of that. But for, for what I've put in here, I think I'm pretty stable for a good, good ways to come and uh, very, very happy. This space is just aces. It, it, it performs video, audio, integration, all of it. Really love it. So if you have questions, please ask away in the comments. Particularly if you have more involved questions, I'd love to make specific videos answering you know, questions about elements of the room. Again, check out that home theater playlist. There's a lot of perspective, history, and installation vlogs available on the channel all about this room. And come on back for more. Do all the regular YouTube stuff. Thanks so much for watching.